Cool. Um, yeah, thank you so much for all the quick introductions. Uh, so yeah, before we get started with the event, uh, I'm just going to post the attendance form in the chat. And if you guys could please fill that in, that would be great. I'll um, just, um, yeah, fill that out. Um, and just also a reminder to please um, mute yourself um, during this event and to change your name to your full name, your first name and your surname, uh, followed by your ZID or your SID. Um, and then to fill in the attendance form. But yeah, if you do have any questions um, during the event, uh, feel free to just pop it in the chat. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I will now pass it on to Canva. Gloria, I think your video froze. Uh, sorry, I was experiencing some uh, technical problems. Uh, I think I'm back on now. Okay, sorry. I missed a little bit of what, what Leticia was saying. Can everyone still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I think you're getting lost too. Sorry. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Sorry. I, uh, yeah, so I think it's my turn to share my screen. Yeah. Um, awesome. Sorry, I, if, if I do drop out, I do apologize in advance. Um, so let me know if you don't hear anything. Uh, cool. So, um, hi everyone. My name is Gloria. I'm a product designer at Canva. Uh, as you also heard, I'm here with How and Sagant. Um, so you'll also have the opportunity to hear from them later on in, in this workshop. Um, so today I'll be walking through how you can use the design process to create your portfolio um, and show examples of some exemplary portfolios that I've come across online. Towards the end, we'll have time for questions and the opportunity to provide uh, feedback on some of your portfolios. Um, I'll also be sharing this presentation around after the event. Um, and as I'm walking through uh, some of these portfolios, feel free to take note of what you like and dislike about them. You might notice some common patterns, themes and ideas, and maybe towards the end, you'll have the opportunity to share some of these insights and observations. Now, for those who don't know what the design process is, it's a critical framework that we as designers use to solve problems. The design process isn't just a useful framework for your work. It can also be used to help you when it comes to building a portfolio. And I'll be walking through each of these steps later on today. Um, so uh, starting with why. So before we actually begin creating our portfolio, it's important to ask yourself why you are doing this. What's the purpose of your portfolio and how do you want to be represented? Because as a designer, your portfolio is, a, is your design uh, fingerprint. It represents your identity, uh, your style and your approach. So it's important to know what it is that makes you different from everyone else. So take a few minutes to think about who you are and what makes you unique as a, as a, as a person. Um, you might consider the following things such as like, what's unique about me? What's my background and experience? How can I relate this back to the role that I want? What are my skills? Um, and how they're relevant or transferable, and then what are my interests and passions that really line up with this career. Um, so the first portfolio that we'll be looking at um, is one that I quite like, um, and this is Adam Dunaway, he's a Sydney designer. He's got a really eye-catching uh, portfolio and a strong personal statement. So if we actually go to the website here, um, you'll see he's got this awesome interactive visual illustration of himself that cleverly, ooh, is it not showing my, sorry, one second. Can you still see my screen? Yep. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Can, you see, can you see this one where I've got Adam's website on, up online? Uh, only your slides. Okay, sorry. Um, how about now? So yeah, okay, so this is Adam's portfolio. Um, and yeah, he's got a really cool visual illustration of himself that cleverly communicates that he's got both skills in UX UI design and also front end development. Um, and in his own words, uh, his goal was to create an online profile to promote his design work and gain more exposure. So you notice he's got sections on like a featured, uh, a featured page where you can see 
um, mentions of him in uh, certain publications and articles, he's got a section on um, his design work, so on case studies. And then he's also got a section on like a blog where he, he can post his learnings and, and articles. Um, so I think uh, ultimately his goal is to make a profile that was unique and memorable uh, whilst representing his personality. And I think we can all agree that he's really nailed this with this high impact introduction. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation. Can you all see that? Cool. Um, yeah, so once you've kind of defined what your personal statement is, it's, then you need to start thinking about the contents that will go into your portfolio. So your portfolio should have at least the following components. So an about me section, two to three projects um, that you think are like your best projects, um, and then optionally your hobbies or your interests that you could potentially combine with the about me page as well. Um, it's important to not include everything. So only select the pieces that you're most proud of and lead with your most impressive projects instead of listing them chronologically. Um, so when you're writing up your case studies, it's important to include the following components to guide your storytelling. Um, the last thing that you want to do is just dumping all of your images inside your project without explaining the process that you went through to get there, especially if you're looking to position yourself as a UX designer or product designer. Um, so firstly, I guess you should talk about the, the why, the purpose of your project, why is it that you started this project, the duration, uh, how long did it take, your role, the team members, how did you contribute to the team, um, outlining your design process, so what steps did you take to get to the final solution, um, visual artifacts, so evidence of any data collected, research conducted, photos of maybe your team doing a, a brainstorming session, sketches, wireframes, that kind of stuff links to a uh, prototype. Um, and this is a really great thing to have if you sh you've shipped a feature or, uh, or a product, um, but highlighting the impact that your designs had on users and the business with metrics as well, that really adds credibility to your work. Um, so the next uh, portfolio that we were looking at is Elizabeth Lynn. So Elizabeth is a designer from the States and I'm going to switch over to her website here. Um, and this particular case study I think is really great. Um, as you notice, she starts off with kind of framing the problem and providing the user with context. She leads with like a how might we statement. So how might we enable teachers to identify and fill student gaps in learning um, before she goes on into the actual problem and the research conducted. So you'll note that um, she kind of takes us on this journey to walk through the insights that came out of those interviews. She posts a screenshot of the affinity mapping exercise that she and her team did to identify those insights. Um, and then just um, kind of talking about the scope of the work, really uh, showcasing that product thinking um, before kind of leading on to the, the feedback and. Um, even including quotes from real users, like that really adds weight to your uh, case study. Um, and then you can see the iterations in terms of the UI and the design. And finally, she kind of wraps this up really nicely by adding the impact that she and her team had. Um, and you can see that she's included metrics like NPS scores or like monthly active uh, learners. Um, so this kind of really proves that your work delivered value. Um, and similarly, we have another case study by a design called Guru. So this one's a little bit more comprehensive, but immediately notice how, you know, he's got this um, navigation menu, which also serves to showcase his um, design thinking process. And this is really great, especially if you've got a lot of information, you can kind of break that down so you don't overwhelm the user. Um, so you can see uh, that this is really uh, easy for someone like a recruiter to just walk through and, and look at um, each section in detail. Um, so starting from the top, uh, he's got a really great summary of the project. Um, you can see his role, the duration of the project, the tools used, his team members, and then uh, similar to Elizabeth, you know, framing the problem, um, talking about the problem statement to give the user context as to what this problem tried to achieve. Um, and then showing a snippet of that solution before really diving into the research conducted. So you can see the quotes that he collected from real users, the affinity map, the affinity map um, exercise that he did with his team to come up and, and find those insights. Um, and then he goes into the actual uh, ideations. So uh, mocking up low fidelity wireframes and screens. Um, 
So this is, you know, a really great example of the structure of, of how he structured his, um, his uh, case study. Um, and then uh, after that, you can see the actual UI and the interaction, how, how a user might actually um, interact with the product. Um, so he's included kind of like this little, nice little video um, of what the product looks like. Um, and also just, you know, a little bit more um, screenshots of the, the visuals or the, the UI design. Um, and what I also really like about his portfolio is that he's added kind of the data collected from user testing. So usab usability testing is a very important part of the product design process because it gives, allows you to receive feedback and then refine your designs. Um, so you can see like he's included these, uh, these, this data, um, which again adds weight to um, this case study and his portfolio. So um, yeah, so uh, remember when you're structuring your case study, um, use the design process to show the key steps that you took to solve a problem. Um, the goal is to pair supporting evidence with each of the steps to really strengthen your portfolio. Um, for example, when you're conducting research, it's good to include things like quotes, data collected from surveys, affinity maps, um, competitor analysis, interviews. Um, when, it's, when you're ideating, uh, make sure to include things like sketches, um, customer journey flows, uh, maybe low fidelity mockups. Um, and when you're testing, um, be sure to include things such as um, data collected from like usability tests um, and also showing the refinement and the, the improvement in your designs over time. Um, and uh, don't forget to include maybe a link to the interactive prototype as well so that the viewer can actually go and, and see for it themselves in detail and, and actually experience the product that you've designed. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't try to be perfect. Your stories or your projects are a story about you and your work. It's a narrative that represents your journey, the obstacles, the successes that you faced along the way. Um, so let your work speak for itself. Uh, now, common questions that I get from designers starting out in their career, and even when I started out myself, was, well, what if I don't have any projects? Um, and there are some ways that you can overcome this. So one of them is actually just starting your own personal projects. Like, is there an idea that you're interested in pursuing? Are you passionate about solving a, a specific problem? Maybe you can use the design thinking process to kind of come up with a solution, and that could serve even as a project to include in your case study. Another one is redesigning projects. Oh, sorry, redesigning products so are you frustrated with particular products or apps that you've used maybe you can redesign a solution to address those um, those problems and pain points uh, hackathon ideas are a really great way for you to work with other team members um, to formulate an idea and pitch that to users um, so for instance I used a hackathon idea in my uh, portfolio um, but also, you know, reaching out to charities or nonprofits, helping them with redesigning their website or, or their product. Um, and finally, UX exercises. So there's a really great, um, uh, there's a really great website um, that was created by uh, this guy called Artem Dushinsky. He is a product designer. And basically, if you sign up to um, his weekly uh, newsletter, you receive design challenges and that really helps you when it comes to practicing your design skills and preparing yourself for um, interviews. Um, so I actually might even share that link in the chat. Okay, so feel free to subscribe to that if you are interested. Um, the next portfolio that I want to um, uh, talk about is Priyanka. So Priyanka, I think she's also a uh, designer from the States. So um, she actually goes out and um, kind of redesigns products herself um, without really, you know, because she wants to add that to her, her portfolio. So a really good example of that is the Sephora app. So if you go to her website, um, you view the case study, you can see that she's written up this blog on her redesign of the Sephora uh, customer app. Um, and she even states that she's not affiliated with Sephora in any capacity. But then she does go into a lot of detail in actually understanding Sephora and its customers. She collects um, uh, user research from online surveys. She even goes in store and interviews customers to understand how they would use the existing app. Um, so what's really great about this is, you know, she does a lot of um, user research and affinity mapping. Um, she even has a matrix to identify, like, uh, to kind of prioritize those key features based on user needs and the business needs. Um, and then conducting like a user, 
a usability testing session to understand those key issues that came out of um, the existing app design. Um, and notice how she's got, you know, user personas as well to understand who the customer is, what their goals and their wants and frustrations are. Um, she does a redesign of the information architecture, and then she goes and, and actually sketches out the solution. So doing some ideation and paper prototyping. And what's really, really lovely is that she does a before and after of the redesign as well to show improvements in the key user flows. Um, so that's a really great way to show the improvements that you've made in a product. Um, and finally, um, on top of all of that, she actually goes back um, install to Sephora to to validate these solutions and and to conduct another round of usability um, testing to see you know what impact her designs had and you can see that she uses data to show that oh people were now able to successfully complete some of these tasks which they previously weren't able to um, so again you know great stuff if you know you don't have a project um, and you want to you want to find something to do or to include in your portfolio you know go out and find a product that you really like and and see if you can try to improve that experience um, so yeah so now that you've seen some examples of portfolios it's also good to check out websites like best folios co folios behance and even blogs um, so if you haven't yet seen best folios i would recommend that that's a uh, pretty much the most popular one that I've seen online. And they always update their website with um, portfolios that they find from uh, designers in the industry. So I would recommend looking into that. Um, so we're gonna have a look at three more portfolios. So I've got uh, Tony Jin. Oops, so we go back to Tony Jin's website. Um, so what I really like about his uh, his portfolio is that it's very personal. You can definitely see his personality come through. Um, notice how he's got T for Tony, your T-shaped designer. That's a very impactful, you know, high impact introduction. And he's also got this awesome word cloud that's shaped in the letter T, which showcases the skills that he has um, as a designer. And I think that's pretty awesome. So if you go and dive into one of his case studies, notice the loading state even has a fun fact about him. I think that's a very clever kind of way of using that loading state. Um, and when you go into his case studies, again, he's also got this navigation menu, which serves to show his design approach um, when tackling certain um, problems. Um, and similar to Elizabeth and the other portfolios that we've seen, he's, he's got the problem statement listed up front to give the user context um, before kind of diving in and um, showing the research that, that he conducted. Um, notice that he's got things like, you know, a summary of his role, the timeline, the team members and the tools that he used. Um, and he's got a very strong kind of visual UI design skills as well as you can see. Um, he's got uh, kind of gifts of those key user flows of the solution. Um, and then uh, he goes into the competitor analysis, the affinity maps, again, kind of another visual artifact to show the research that he conducted. Um, and also uh, user personas that he created based on those, those of, based on the data um, and the research from those interviews collected. Um, and then you'll notice he's got uh, like flow charts for the ID, for the ideation session. So this was kind of like a brainstorming session um, where he kind of got engineers and other designers to come up with ideas um, before fleshing them out into into sketches and then you know low fidelity wireframes, which he then used for usability testing. So again, you know, really strong use, uh, really, really great use of this visual artifacts and pairing each phase of the design process with evidence of the work that, that went into it. Um, and finally, uh, you know, going into the high fidelity, the UI, showing the visual designs and um, also the, if we scroll down, he's also got um, the results conducted, the results that he took away from those usability tests when he put that prototype in front of users. Um, you can see he's captured that in um, this really, you know, really simple kind of um, chart. Um, so yeah, uh, another really comprehensive case study and not necessarily expected of a, a junior designer, but I think, you know, just having a look at at these types of examples really gives you a strong idea of how you might want to structure your case studies. Um, 
So another uh, another designer that I had a look at, which I think is really good, is uh, Pratipa. So she's uh, another pretty experienced designer, but again, you'll notice how simple, how clean her portfolio is. She's got a very strong kind of personal statement. And then as you scroll down, you'll see, you know, um, kind of blocks for each of the case studies that she has. So if you go in, um, you can see, uh, oh, as this loads, yeah. So um, yeah, so you can see again, very strong visuals, uh, an overview of the problem, of the context, um, her role, the duration, the team, um, and then really framing and honing into the problem space um, before jumping into the research conducted. So you can see she's got images and screenshots of, of that evidence. Um, the quotes that she uh, took out of having those interviews with real users and then creating those user personas as well. Um, uh, and also conducting competitor research, deriving those insights from that analysis um, before diving into the ideation kind of phase where she does some sketching to map out that solution. Um, and then you can see there's a bit of product thinking in here as well, scoping it down, working with the team to really um, break that MVP or break that project down into bite-sized chunks. Um, so uh, yeah, again, you know, phasing the approach um, and just showing like visuals of the UI and the interaction design. Um, and finally, uh, putting this in front of users and doing some usability testing. So again, uh, you know, you've got the impact of the designs um, using metrics to show what, what uh, value you delivered. Um, so again, this is quite comprehensive. Again, not so much expected of a junior designer, but you can see it's very easy to follow. It's, it's concise um, and it's, very, it's simple and, and, and very clean, um, but also very strong. Um, and finally, we've got Vera. So Vera Chan, uh, Vera Chan she's uh, another designer from the States. Um, you can see very minimalist kind of portfolio, very strong kind of one-liner um, on who she is. Um, and then when you click into a case study, you can also see um, that she's got you know, strong visual. Uh, and um, at the beginning, she started off with some context and why, why they're doing this, pairing it with um, evidence of user research and just research collected, um, an overview of her role, the duration of the, product, of the project, methods in her team. Uh, here, stating her process up front, um, really great stuff to kind of communicate to the user, well, how did she approach this problem? What steps did she take? Doing a competitive analysis and even including photos of herself and her team at the Uber headquarters to do and conduct those user interviews. Um, uh, additionally, she's got quotes from those user interview findings. She's got design requirements, kind of, um, kind of defining the scope of what that solution should be. Um, ideation, so showing sketches and brainstorming sessions with her team to come up with those solutions. Um, even coming up with a service design blueprint to identify gaps in the existing experience. And then um, showing the paper prototype um, uh, the, of the low fidelity, or the mid fidelity solution um, and uh, doing iterations based on usability uh, feedback. Um, and what's great is that she's paired each of these findings from those usability sessions with a solution with her redesigns of the, uh, the UX and the UI. Um, so again, really, really great stuff. You can see she's included little videos as well of the interactions for some of these flows. Um, and yeah, and just like a kind of final reflections and key takeaways from the project, I think is also a really nice touch to add. Um, so oh, that's Sarah. And next slide. Cool. So yeah, so once you have an idea of how you might want to structure it and you have a good idea of the contents that you want to include, it's good to sketch out the idea on paper or even mock it up in a tool like Sketch or Figma. Um, one mistake that I made when I was uh, starting out was actually just jumping straight into the website builder and then I got distracted with all the, you know, like nice little visual interactions and stuff and um, that kind of derailed me from actually doing or completing my portfolio. So I recommend, you know, sketching it out in a low fidelity mock-up before actually diving into building and developing it. 
So when it comes to building and developing your website, um, there's no one size fits all. You know, some website builders are easier to use. Some have better customization, better templates. Um, and it's really just a matter of just trying it out and seeing it for yourself. Um, so because I had very specific requirements with my portfolio and I wanted to have uh, you know, unique interactions, I went with Webflow. Um, but I've also heard good things about Wix and Squarespace and even Notion. So Notion isn't really a website builder tool, but um, you know, it's also, it's a good way to kind of just document things in a very simple kind of nice UI. Um, so that's also something worth looking into. Um, so this is my portfolio. So I'll give you a quick run through of, how I, uh, of what I did. Um, so for me, I, my goal was really not just to showcase my design work, but also to um, showcase things that I did outside of work. So I wanted to make it very personal. Um, and I've added kind of custom interactions so that you, when you hover over a verb, um, that kind of takes you to like another page um, in my website. So it kind of shows you the hobbies that I like to do outside of work. Um, and beneath that, I've listed like three of my top projects. Um, so this one's we rot, one is Leaf, which is a hackathon idea, and then Sea Ladder, which was a, a startup project that um, I worked on on the side. Um, so if you kind of go into one of these, um, you know, I tried to have a feature image at the top. I tried to lay out like the overview, the context of the project, why we did this, my role, the duration, giving some background, um, and the process, so outlining my design process, how to, what steps did I take to address the problem, um, con uh, conducting usability uh, and user research. Um, so this is kind of an example of an affinity map exercise that I did with my team to identify those, um, those uh, pain points. Um, and then also using like a framework to prioritize those usability issues. Um, and finally, I went on and uh, did a little bit of ideation. So these were screenshots of before. Um, and I, I went on and did the wireframes. Um, so starting out with low fidelity before kind of going over the high fidelity once I, I did a bit more um, usability testing. Um, and then lastly, I had an actual functional product that I worked with an engineer to build. So having a link to that or showing a video of that really helps to show the interaction and the user experience. Um, and finally wrapping that up with like key takeaways um, and learnings. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think uh, I applied a similar structure uh, to my other projects. I think uh, one thing to note is that you won't be able to tick off all of the boxes um, in, in terms of um, like design process. It really depends on the project, complexity, the duration of it. Um, but just having uh, a diverse range of products or, or projects that capture um, those skills is, is also uh, something you should consider when you're building your portfolio. Um, cool, so let's go back here. Uh, so finally, the last step is reviewing. Um, oh, yes, I might open this up, but uh, you may have already noticed some patterns with the portfolios that I showed today. Um, you know, what did you, what did you notice that was common or recurring in each of these portfolios? Was there anything that stood out to you um, that you found interesting? Um, there's no right or wrong answers, but I'm curious to, to hear like, you know, were there common things um, that you thought uh, stood out in each of them? Um, feel free to post in the chat. Yeah, I'm starting to see simplicity of colors and designs. It's well organized, strong visuals. Exactly. Yeah, having really strong visuals really makes your portfolio really attractive. Um, importance of personality, 100%. Um, very important, especially when you want to stand out as, as a designer, um, showing who you are um, and letting your portfolio reflect that is good. Sequential, good flow of ideas, visual-based navigation. Yeah, these are all really, really great ideas and um, they're all right. Um, so what I'll, I'll talk through next is, well, what do recruiters look for? And to summarize, um, uh, there's about, you know, seven points here, um, but essentially product thinking is a big thing when we're hiring product designers because, you know, there's more to creating a great product than producing good UI. The product needs to have a compelling and useful feature set that can then be prioritized um, effectively for more features that could go into the product. So this also involves taking direction and consideration from others and weaving this into the solution. 
Um, UX design, understanding the way that users interact with the product and the workflows and completing their goals. So that's also really important um, as, a, as a user experience designer, as well as visual design. So, you know, being a good designer also means having a good eye for UI. Um, and maybe this is something that you're really good at. So that's, that should be something to emphasize in your portfolio. Um, prototyping. Um, being able to present a solution in the most tangible fashion possible is also important. So having links out to clickable prototypes gives the viewer the clearest vision of what the design is meant to be. Um, user testing. So, you know, obviously you need to get feedback on your designs to validate your solutions. So you need to have tested them with a suitable audience and including some of those results in your portfolio as well is really important to have. Um, Teamwork versus contributions, so this should come through in the case studies that you write up, but you know, it's good to show how you worked in a team, but also how did you contribute to the overall process and the success of the project? Um, what parts of the design process were you, did you attribute to? Um, and finally, storytelling and communication. So this is really, really important. So how well do you craft your story? Does it flow? Can someone who has no context understand what you did and what steps you took to get to the final solution? Um, and another question that I, I get from a lot of um, designers is, well, what does uh, our Canva interv interview process look like? So typically it would look like this. So you would start off with a recruiter interview, have an initial conversation between the recruiter and yourself, and then you would meet with two people from the design team to go through your projects from your portfolio. Um, if you move on to the next round, you'll get a take home design challenge to work on for the, you know, you're given about a few days to about a week. And then the final interviews, uh, you come back and you present that exercise to the design team. Um, essentially, we really want to understand your thinking and how you solve problems. And this will be followed up by a Q&A on the solution. And then the last uh, the last round is really just, you know, a session where you talk about your career history, your goals and your values. Um, so the final, uh, yeah, so I guess key takeaways from all of this is, you know, creating a great UX portfolio is a journey. It involves a lot of time and effort, but it's definitely worth the experience. Um, so make sure, um, like you guys mentioned, uh, it's very important to inject your own personality, make it personal and showcase who you are. Um, don't try to be somebody else. Um, play to your strengths. You won't be able to tick off all of the boxes and that's okay. Um, don't try to be good at everything. Uh, everyone's going to have their own strengths and their weaknesses. So it's important to highlight your strengths. And finally, keep it simple. You know, the worst thing you can do is to overwhelm the viewer. So as a UX designer, you want to ensure your portfolio is user friendly and easy, easy to navigate through. Um, and I guess well, final words is, you know, it's all about you. Um, remember, people hire people, not portfolios. So really focus on showcasing who you are as a human being. Um, and that is a wrap. Uh, if you are interested in um, internships, our university program manager um, is Jess Beard. You can contact her on LinkedIn or you can also email her at uh, jessica.be at canva.com. Um, and uh, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn or email me at my address. Um, and that's it. Well, yeah, thank you so much. I'm probably going to open it up to the panel for questions, uh, but I, all hope, I hope you all took something away from this. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, is my audio still not working? It's working. Uh, is it working? Is my audio working? Yeah, it is, Luke. Okay, sweet. I thought it wasn't working. No one said anything. Um, well, thanks very much, Gloria, for that amazing presentation. Those slides were so slick. I was very impressed. Is that, do, you, do you guys Thank use you. Canva to make them? Didn't yes, you? that was a Canva template. <laughs> I, I, I like them a lot. I like the little um, little people. They're kind of cool. I like those um, sorts Climation. of designs. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Um, well, I think, well, I guess we can open up to questions. Sorry, there's a bird sitting right next to me. Um, the, um, so I, well, I, I think we we're going to open it up to some portfolio review at the moment. Um, are you guys up for that? If I send a link in the chat and you guys maybe go through and have a look at it and give some, um, tips or, um, anything. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Yeah, we're definitely keen to have, some, have a look. Um, well, I think our first one is from, 
Well, we, we're just going to do them. We've had our um, the guys from our respected societies kind of submit them um, earlier, and um, if they're not here, then we probably won't run through them. But we've chosen our first one is from um, Griffin Edge. I think he's in the call. I saw him earlier. Um, I'll drop his link in the chat. Griffin, if you want to unmute, maybe turn your camera on. Um, and yeah, there he is. Yeah. And there's the link to his website in the chat if you want to have a look. And we can maybe screen share and um, run through the website. Yeah, sounds good. Does um, Hal, us again, want to wanna jump on in one of these? Yeah, um, should I share the screen or? Yeah. Sure. Okay, let me find. You guys see my screen? Yep. Perfect. Um, hello, Griffin. Hey. This is the, the, the landing page that I'm looking at. So um, uh, quick background on what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a product designer to hire. So I'm here with that context. So I'm looking at this. So your website is pretty straightforward. There's a bit of bio there. Then there is a bit of case studies here. And there are some other work here. Um, most often, what I do is actually I click on about because that's where I can actually see more about your personality and what's, what your background is and where, uh, what are things that you're into because this is kind of like a thing that I go through personally and I also like value a lot. And um, it gives, I, now I can see all your interests now. And uh, if I can go here, it's like you are into so many different things. So these are beautiful. These are, these are things that makes me understand what you are outside as a designer. And that helps me to understand, um, uh, you know, like a bit more about you as a person. Um, so um, maybe I can go through a case study first because I want to see what you went through into with this one. I'd say um, the the other one is probably a better case study. It's a bit more fleshed out. Yeah. Uh, one good feedback would be uh, to not take chances in general with the case studies. If you're having anything in your top fold, if you're showcasing anything in your top fold, better to make sure that both of them are really good in giving a very detailed, a very detailed overview for recruiters in general. So mm -hmm. someone is coming in and uh, you saw what are the links that I'm clicking in, that's actually your sure chance of winning me over. So the more you share, the more you think that you do, it'd be great. So this project is very clear for, very straightforward. I think you given it as a type. So I, I believe it's a physical product design and um, it's, yeah, I can clearly see your role. And uh, it's a group, uh, a group of four designers who made this and there's a summary. Um, there's a bit of research concept. Okay, this is great. Um, skimming through the outline would be really helpful. So if, I, if I'm going through the outline, if I can clearly see everything uh, in the outline, then that means that I can actually focus on one of those things and then deep dive. So, How well, long do you usually spend reading through a portfolio? Again? Maximum five minutes, five, 10 minutes. That's pretty much my process because um, I usually, if I'm spending five to 10 minutes um, for preliminary review, then I would love for the designer to talk it through in the, if I'm moving them to the first round or second round. So that's how I see it, not more than that. How much do you guys spend on? Um. For me, I generally scan things that are at a high level, so probably a couple of seconds to just look at the overview of the, the design thinking process behind this, and then I would dive deeper to like look at things in detail. 
Um, so that's also something to be conscious or aware of is that um, recruiters do have to go through a lot of portfolios. They do receive a lot of applications, so they may not always have the time to look at your work in detail. And that's why having a very clear navigation is important. Um, and, and like you've done here, which is really great, you've kind of got the headings um, outlined um, and that really helps when it comes to skimming through content. Yeah, I, I kind of got what you, um, what you summarized here and that's pretty much it. Um, and sometimes I might not actually be able to play videos and other things, but sometimes I'll be able to. So it would be nice to actually see the story though. I think that's one of the crucial things about portfolio is that a story of this product coming alive and the story of um, you going through the process, iterating it. It's not about the results that you showcase um, because uh, oftentimes the results are as a photos or as a video, they look appealing because the process that you put in, right? This amount mm -hmm. of time you put in. So what, what we are looking for is mostly what you went through. And um, this seems like a very short and sweet portfolio uh, case study here, but obviously um, it doesn't give us enough into uh, uh, like what we're looking into your process. I think like there is a bit of our own research, um, but that is how pretty much it, right? Like what is the iterations or what are things that you went through? Um, Gloria, how do you guys have anything else to share? Um, for me, like you have the research, but there's no, there's nothing about like the insights you gathered from that and then how that fed into your actual concept. I don't think, um, maybe that's something you should probably call out and make, make it a bit more obvious just so okay. that when we are glancing through, um, we do kind of see that uh, straight, straight away. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'd also like to add, um, like, really, really short and succinct, which is great. Um, but you know, pairing some of that research with like evidence of data collected, or you know, user interview quotes collected, that's really good to have as well to add weight to your portfolio. Um, and even having um, having some sketches, so some photos of like sketches or uh, low fidelity mockups as well to show that concept. Having those visuals really helps because you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. So if you want to get information across, it's best to have a lot of visual imagery as well to show that um, UI design thinking. Cool. Yeah, and uh, I can see there's other projects here too. And um, uh, if you're facing any of this, for example, these are really good projects that um, uh, you might have done some analysis or anything. Um, it'd be great to actually um, segment them into you know like what you are showcasing maybe you can say something like product design work or research or analysis work or uh, uh, like even even uh, more if you are in graphic design or anything else uh, maybe you can also showcase that uh, like i think this is one of the website design work that you're showcasing this is really good work that you can uh, probably upset it if someone is looking for a product designer uh mm -hmm. company so like you can talk to them through your website design, right? So you can actually give segments, sections, everything to uh, upsell these uh, case studies better uh, because everything else will be uh, in, a, in other work doesn't actually talk to the people who are looking for. So mm -hmm. yeah, you got all the things right inside. Uh, I think the, the main navigation, if you can get it uh, up, I think you can give more exposure to your projects. Cool. Yeah. Great. We can give a detailed feedback, but yeah, I think uh, we have a lot more portfolios to cover, I guess. Okay. Um, okay, sweet. So we'll move on from Griffins. Yeah. The next one we have here is from, I'm going to butcher this name, um, Yuka Mochizuki, is, uh, and it's a kind of more graphic design focused. Is uh, Yuka here? Um, uh, yeah, I'm here. Perfect. I'll drop that in the chat. I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly. <laughs> That's fine. You got it right. Uh, first name is right. <laughs> um, yeah. Is this the site? Did I get it right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, I'm just shifting everything now, so there isn't any like much content on it. See, I can see you work here. 
these are good work or you mean product design work or uh yeah those are my work yeah okay um so again i'm looking for a product designer and specifically but the first thing i would be clicking on is uh, product design work which looks like a mobile design work but even before i want to see a bit more about you so i think uh This is uh, a very small segment of uh, uh, information about you. I think um, these are nice, but uh, if you can write more, or if you have more space to show around about you, that'd be great because that gives us a, a, a bit more perspective into who you are. Um, I'm gonna open this project, this is easier. Yeah, it'd be nicer if uh, this whole Behance allows you to showcase various images, which you can segment and uh, portrays, portray everything here. Um, what happens is that if you add a Figma link, most often or not, it makes me go out of this website, which is also one thing that you need to watch out for because when you when we go out of the website, we can't come and come back and contact you because we'll be opening multiple tabs and everything. So whatever you want to showcase, showcase everything, everything or whatever you want to try to portray as a story, tell everything here in a Behance page or any other website page. Uh, keep us engaged here. That would make us like do a lot of things faster. I guess it depends. Uh, is this portfolio for like a product design role or is this more for a, uh, a graphic design role? Yeah. Um, I would say it's more graphic design. Yeah, okay. So um, if it's a graphic design, then um, obviously um, I think these, some of your work here showcases very clearly. Uh, but is there any process that you can add through this? Maybe you might have been through iteration. Maybe you would have explored some more version. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I, I definitely do have um, process, but I just haven't had yeah, them in yet. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. I mean, you can always add them later. Um, if you want someone as a, a designer to go through them, most often or not, you'll be trying to understand like how do you try to uh, like this is a very good uh, um, visual design project to actually uh, tackle the challenge of um, getting all this input here. Uh, in terms of your different data points here, price points here. How did you manage this project as a whole is also another thing because the client might be giving you information, but how do you manage that? How do you make sure there's good iteration between you and the client? So these are things that will showcase um, what you went through. Uh, as a final result, you can see, oh, it looks so easy, or oh, it looks so nice, but I know all the things that you might have went through. And those are things that you can actually portray well. Yeah. Yep. And, and to add to that, um, remember like your portfolio is kind of showcasing your story. So you want to, you don't just want to talk about your successes, but you also might want to talk about your failures and the journey that you went through to get to that end solution. Um, you know, it's all about the journey, not the destination. And I think that also applies to your portfolio as well. Yep, definitely. Yeah. And, um, how is there anything else you want to add? Um, I was just wondering, have you guys seen any really good um, like graphic design portfolios that might be a good example to share? I'm just having a look now through just some web pages, but. I would say that Awards actually has a lot of graphic design content there. Um, there's actually a category for that, um, for portraying um, purely graphic design work. Um, I would yeah. also yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can also check out best folios. I think they also include some portfolios for graphic designers as well. Um, but yeah, I think even even if you are positioning yourself as a graphic designer, um, you know, having some context or having you know just some explanation around like what your design thinking was um, instead of just having images really helps the viewer at least understand like what this project was about and how you approached it. Yep. 
And uh, the other thing that you can always do is to actually, if you're using Behance or anything else, make sure that if you have it navigating around, it actually tells more about you. For example, Pinterest, for, for instance, shows me what you're pinning and it gives me a bit more about your interest and everything. So if it's Behance, maybe you can also show your mood boards, set up things that you'll be exploring and set up things that you are appreciating. These are things that will help us get more context. If you're using a platform, use a platform fully. That's uh, probably a good feedback I can give. Yep, yep, thank you. Yep, um, I'll stop for sharing now. Is there another portfolio for us to review? Sorry, I was just moving. Um, so I have the next one. The next one is from Farhana. Um, let's see. Uh, from Farhana Ronak. Um, uh, are you in the call, Farhana? Probably butchered the name as well. Um, nope, guess not. Okay, moving on. The next one is from Alison Zong. And it's more of a kind of graphic designer focused again. Alison, are you in the call? <laughs> Maybe try Alex Pribula. I think yeah. he's also in the call. Yeah, okay. Um, we can skip down to Alex's. Um, I'll send his. Um, there it is. So there you go, Alex. Sharing once again. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is a very clean portfolio. I went through them before too. It's a very clean portfolio. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, I think uh, you portrayed your information well and your skills too. I think uh, these are really good things. Uh, for someone who wants to come and ask you for a job or anything, they kind of know what you're trying to sell here. Um, and uh, I really like your product thumbnails or like case study thumbnails too. Um, so probably for my main one is the um, the Care Cube one, the blue one. That's my my main studio work. Um, yep. I probably should have that as like the first, like on the top left. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a yeah. Like you said, um, whatever you want to, whatever you want to make someone to tap on, make sure that it's very well clear. It's in the top, and um, the things that we look for is not uh, always the like we all, we will never go through. I never went through every single project in a portfolio. Most likely, I skip few of them uh, or like just go through like few of them at, at max. Um, but uh, before I go into the portfolio, the case study itself, how, Gloria, do you have some any feedback for the web page itself? Um, I think the, um, okay. the photo is really cool. With the, yeah. the map. It's very creative. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love the, it's very strong kind of personal statement. You give a nice little bio on who you are. You even have a nice uh, a CTA to, to contact you, which is great. And also a link to your projects. Um, yeah, so really strong. I can definitely see the personality come through in this and it's a very creative one. So um, well done. Thank you. Yeah, and I personally love the bottom section, but I think it's pretty much like you can see that everywhere uh, in all of, all, of, all of your case studies too. So I can see what project it is. Um, then I can see the subject area. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have too much stuff here though. Like, cause I know you said you only spend like five minutes sort of per portfolio. So yeah, probably needs to be made a bit more concise, but. I, I think, I think you can always, um, uh, I would, I would even argue that this is the same portfolio that you might be going through in detail in the first round called portfolio round in the interview process. So it's good that it's detailed, but it'd be nicer if it's like a small section on the top that says um, like a, like what is the outcome? What is the, 
uh, work that you did and uh, like a simple outline about actual actual project because obviously I can read through them uh, and uh, I'll probably be reading through them uh, in a in a different time frame. But I also want to make sure that I'm picking the right one. What if there's another project that I want to read through too? So yeah, for sure. Yeah. But these yeah. are. Sorry, I'm, I might add like, yeah, it, it's definitely really detailed, um, but I think, you know, try to put your, put your um, try to see things from like a recruiter's perspective as well. Um, as a UX designer, you kind of want to be empathizing with the user. They don't have much time. They just want to get the key information. So how can we kind of disseminate this information to make it easily digestible for the user? So like pairing some of these sections with like visuals, I noticed you have some strong visuals in here. So definitely uh, letting those images speak for themselves is really good to get that message across. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, you can really um, add a little bit more weight to this by by pairing it with some other research and the, the findings that, that you collected as well. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And um, if possible, if it, this is a, um, a research project or if it's a, what, like, it'd be nicer if we can um, show the outcome of this project early on. So yeah. I know that what, what I'm looking for and what's, um, what I'll be reaching at at the end of the phase would be nice. But I really like there is a story here. From what I skimmed through, I saw the story. I think that story is one key thing that everyone I would like um, should show in their project because uh, we are all like living through a project. It's not it doesn't happen in a day. So it'd be nice to actually show, show those pain obstacles or any issues that you went through, how you found out uh, new ways to solve problem, all the different things you can share here. Um, but yeah, overall. Um, the portfolio is almost there. I think you can do a few more tweaks and it can make it perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. How do you have anything else to add? Um, the, the other thing I would, add, would have added was um, if, the, uh, if you are finding that your, your case study is too long, rather than cutting stuff out of it, maybe just make just add uh, call outs into the, each of the sections so that when we are skimming through uh, those sections, um, we know like, just a summary of what each section is, uh, especially if that section is way too long. Yeah, yeah, I saw there was one one of the example ones um, that you showed, Gloria, and it had like um, like call out, yeah, like little like annotations, and that looked really nice, like personal kind of comments. So, yeah, okay, cool, awesome, thank you. All right, uh, we will stop sharing and go for the next one. Okay, so the next one I'm going to put forward. Matteo, um, who's a Suede member. I think he's here. I saw him earlier. Yeah, hey guys. Uh, and I'll drop his link in the chat. This, all right, personally, his is crazy because it's coded from scratch, not even using Squarespace or anything. So I'm quite impressed. Thanks, Luke. Hi, Matteo. Is that hey, how are you going? How do I pronounce your name right? Yeah, uh, Matteo. Yeah, you said it right. Most people don't say it right, so you did well. This is a very good uh, introduction, I would say, as a cover photo. I think uh, this makes this someone who's coming in to feel well. Uh, my first question was like, is this a video or is it like, like that, this is the kind of question I have, like is someone as a videographer or like a motion designer? Uh, that's like a lot of questions pop up, right? As a recruiter, I'm coming in. Uh, so I'm trying to understand a bit more into what kind of projects that you're working on. And uh, this particular statement is interesting because um, is this, are you, uh, uh, I am also coming in the face, are you a product designer or a, uh, like an industrial designer or uh, into architecture? That's why when I'm, only when I scrolled here, I can understand a bit more like you're into product design and even to some other work. So again, first thing I do is click more. I want to learn more about you. And uh, I think this is a photo. Yeah, this is a bit of more personality here. I really like this. I assume these are all things that you coded by yourself. Yeah. That, I don't know why that's big, but on my, well, my laptop, that doesn't happen, so. 
you know, it's, nothing goes right with code. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, that, I should probably reduce it. So, <laughs> yeah, this is great. I think what you portrayed here is more about you that is outside uh, a designer role and what are you doing and uh, what are things that you're interested in. And I can see a little more things about you. And uh, these are really good skills to have, to be honest, like being able to design, being able to code. Uh, these are two things I, I would really love to uh, see more personalities like this. It makes me actually, now I'm more curious about actually your work. So I'm going to your work. So I'm gonna click on this one. So. Like this is a really good brief section where I can see your role and um, what you did, how long you did, and your team and your tools that you used. This is a section that I would say is like most often um, I want to read through because oftentimes um, uh, it's not a it's not a group project; it's a, a solo project, and you can highlight that better. Oftentimes mm -hmm. the other way around too, so it's it's good that you're highlighting it better. This is a pretty long video, long video. It's like, it's like a promotional video and also a demonstration of what the app is. So it might be a bit long. Yeah. If you can uh, showcase the problems better in a simpler way, even if it's a video, yeah. that'd be great because again, like it's like five minutes video. There's yeah. a very good chance I would have skimmed through them. Not yeah, yeah. Uh, actually. And um, yeah. I really love the um, the the the, uh, the the transition effects. I think you have really strong interaction designs and emotion design skills, and the, I think that really comes through in the the way that you coded your website. Um, I really love the yeah the videos that you have. Um, it's very it's very unique. Um, so yeah, well done. And the case studies as well is very comprehensive, um, but they're also very easy to follow, which, uh, which is really good. There are quite a few different sections here that's well highlighted. For example, the define versus the process, things that you're kind of sharing here. I can see that you went through some of them and um, um, that's what I'm going to be reading through. So I kind of give an outline about what I'm scrolling inside. So again, like these are nicer ways to format. Uh, obviously, I will be reading through them just for the sake of this session. I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> And showcasing the results is also a really important thing. Like Gloria just mentioned there, it's nice that you're doing it this way. So it means that I actually know that, uh, how is your design getting uh, validated by the users and what are you doing after that to actually mitigate that? If there's something not working. Overall, the process is very satisfactory. I think this is like a good product design portfolio and um, Overall, I think like this, the reflection is also more important because uh, most often um, the products that we work on gets evolved over the course of time, even after we finish designing. It's good that you're articulating here what's happening after or what are, you, what are the things that you would have done differently, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I like your portfolio. I think it's good. Uh, it's good to you. about what you're, um, what you're working on and uh, exactly um, what problems are you solving. Um, how is there anything that you want to add? The thing I liked the most was um, if you get just start scrolling down. So this is a lot of inf of information, and if you if we took that all out and pasted it into like a Google Doc, for example, it'd be pretty overwhelming. But mm -hmm. I, love, I love what you did, where you spaced everything out into like sizable chunks. So as a reader, um, I can actually just focus on reading that bit and that bit only. Um, so yeah, I, I think what you've done here is um, a really good way of just kind of um, like showcasing visually and kind of breaking up the information into sizable chunks uh, for 
operators, which is really good. I'm actually curious about your site. Site projects are oftentimes one of those things that uh, shows what someone is doing outside of work. So um, these are also really good things to showcase if you can showcase them more often. Even if that's not that related to design, it's still great. <laughs> you can tell I'm <laughs> These are amazing. Good job. Stop sharing. Um, but yeah. This is Thank you. We, we love having um, Matteo on the team for Suede. He always, he came through and he made these backgrounds in like 10 minutes. So like, I was like, this morning I was like, we need some Suede Society backgrounds for Zoom and we had these. To be fair, to be fair, I used the Canva template because it's a Canva event. So yeah. it was fitting and it was so quick. But you knew your audience, Matteo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, our next one comes from DigiSock with Jarvis Wang. I think he's in the call. I've been told he is. Um, I'll, I'll drop the link. I think this one's actually a PDF. So it's not a website like the others. Um, Jarvis, if you'd be so kind as to um, maybe unmute your mic at least. Perfect. He's here. Sweet. Go on. Yep. One of the things about PDFs is that it also gives you the flexibility of um, uh, various, um, uh, for example, like layout, layout in, in general, it's easier to see through them. So there are portfolios that I've used in two page views so I can skim through them faster. So, but yeah, if you're using a landscape view, make sure that the content is also like easy to skim through. Um, this is a very easy way for me to understand this is me. So this is a good section where I can understand about me. Uh, and uh, I can see your life journey. This is also really good that you're actually showcasing your portfolios right away um, instead of uh, uh, spending a lot of things around um, uh, like what who you are more. I think it just jumps right into your first project, I guess. And uh, this is also good because now I can actually see you started reading your work. But um, portfolios in PDFs don't offer me a way to link between different sections. So I can't skip this now, and I need to uh, go through the work before I want to read more about you. So I think this is good that you're making everyone read through your portfolio work. But yeah, like uh, linking is also harder. So this is a fine balance that you need to know. When you add more projects in, it's going to be longer PDF. So that's one thing that I would be mindful about. I think one thing that I might add is um, some of the content is quite small. So, you know, if a recruiter has a really tiny screen, they're going to have to, you know, zoom in up really closely to see the details of the work, um, which, you know, um, could be mitigated if you had them kind of blown up on a, on a web page or something, or even if you just had it on like one page. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is like the readability of, of the content within your portfolio is making sure that the end user can really see that clearly. Yeah, the overall, I think the PDF um, portfolios are great for desktop, but when it's mobile, I need to like always like zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, which is an experience that like in a 30 second, like if I want to like skim through your portfolio, I would get all of this out. So 
I, I highly recommend having a website uh, if you can access. I mean, right, a lot, lot of website companies do give you a free, a free version for you to access. Uh, if you don't have any website, I don't want to upset anything, but Canva also have a website. So you can just literally create a mobile website in Canva. It's free. So um, you can use any of these free services to create a website and you can navigate. I think that would be really good uh, value for if you are using your portfolio as a submission for a lot of companies that you're applying for. Um, but yeah, I think there is, uh, because the portfolio work is also merging with different portfolio work, what happens is that I'm already feeling a bit of uh, like which project is which one. So I think that would be nice if you can add some separation, whether it's a PDF or anywhere else, add some blank pages, add some white spaces there. So I understand that this is a different project, this is a different project. So, but yeah, overall the work is great. I think I can totally see all the things that you went through. There is some story here, uh, but uh, the presentation and how you're sharing your portfolio, I think you can definitely uh, aim, aim for a more flexible way. Um, Making, making sure the recruiters can actually skim through faster, understand your work, free, also easy to access from any, any device, right? Like I shouldn't be using a desktop to access your site. Uh, sometimes I'd be getting my emails, like there's an interview uh, in half an hour or one hour, and this is a candidate who's like applied for this. I want to just open for my mobile and skim through all your work. So make it very accessible, that'd be great. Uh, how do you have any other feedback to I I personally found it, um because the the portfolio you've got is very like horizontal um i, I found it per personally a bit uh difficult to digest everything easily uh, as opposed to if it was just a single column vertically and it's like like again said if i was looking at this on my mobile um i can't just squat swipe through very easily um that's my um, that's my own piece of feedback is may maybe consider um changing the layout in some way um but still maintaining uh, your level of personality in it. Yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking forward for more uh, creative PDF portfolios too. PDFs have come a long way. So I don't think like it's completely not okay to like skip PDF. So like feel free to explore things, uh, but yeah, more creative uh, portfolios are still welcome. I'm gonna stop sharing, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I might, who, who else do we have here on the list? We've done the tail. Um, I think that's, almost, we're almost at the end. Oh, hold on, we have um, Taylor Lamb here. It's Taylor in the call. She's from Digisoc. Um, we have Taylor. Nope. Um, no, we don't have Taylor. I just looked at the participants. Um, um, okay. We have um, Jade, um, one of our Swade members here. I'll drop hers in. Um, Jade, Jade, are you in the call? Hello. Yes. I'll just check this video. Sweet. Jade, that is Jade's there. Hi, Jay. Hello, how are you going? Good. Um, so again, I'm looking for a product designer and I'm coming to your portfolio. It looks very clean, very simple. I was wondering if you had advice because I am a product designer now, but I've had previous experience in research roles. And I'm also interested in research, so I'm not too sure how to cater for both sides. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, um, I, I would say more of a, a career question, I would say. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think it depends upon what gets you going, because as you get more into product design role over the years, your daily grin will be more on things that you should love doing and you should be passionate about doing it every day. And yeah. it's design and it has been for like all the years. 
and uh, I never get bored of that. I never get I never get like not excited about design problems or anything. So if research is something that you think that keeps you going, I think you should still focus on making that as into a tangible uh, role over the years. Um, also, I would highly recommend like actually um, start working around and then pivoting too. Maybe you can yeah, yeah. You like part design more as you start working, or maybe you hate it. It depends on how different people do. So, yeah. uh, Gloria, do you have any um, uh, any any answer for this? Yeah, I think what's really great about the product design specialty is that you can go broad or you can go deep. And sometimes product designers want to specialize in a particular area. So, like you mentioned, UX research is you know one of your strengths. Um, you could definitely you should definitely play to your strengths. Um, for example, if you want to apply for a UX research role. Uh, definitely highlight that in your portfolio. But you know, if you do want to go broad, then you should also uh, showcase that in, in the work that you do as well, and also communicate that to recruiters or, and when you're applying for a job. Um, I think that's you know which direction you choose to go down will depend on your experience. Um, you know, the fact that you're trying out all these these roles in different companies is really great because you get exposure, and through exposure, you learn what you like and dislike, and that that hopefully should guide your decision making when it comes to knowing which path to go down. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, um, like I said, product design is pretty flexible. You can choose to go in one direction or another. Um, that's up to you. No one's really kind of telling you to be one specific type of designer. Um, so it's good to to recognize that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, in, uh, specifically in Canva, we have the spectrum of designers all working together. So there's always going to be teams big enough for you, you to actually spread your wings in whichever yeah. way. Yeah. So I'm looking here and uh, below your nice cover page here, I'm actually seeing some of your projects, I guess. And um, is there any specific project that you want us to? Um, I think either pregnancy power or Zen Den. So the first two would be, I mean, sorry, the second or third one, because the first one's an internship. Also, I just want to point out me and Jade worked on a project, that project together. So yeah. when you saw mine, yeah. it's the exact same project. Yeah, it'll pretty much be the same <laughs> stuff. So it's up to you, whatever. You Don't worry at all. I mean, this yeah, mine's definitely not as good as Materia's with like all the crazy animations and stuff, but um, yeah. I, like, I think your project, the same, it's, it's good to actually have the same project in a different designer's portfolio because I can see, totally see in different way how someone else is presenting the work, the problems. Um, I think you have a very nice way of framing the problem very clearly here. This is something I like when I come to a particular problem. I can see exactly what you're solving here. Um, and bonus points for making it smaller. It's not like a, uh, like a longer paragraph, but actually three line or two lines. Um, this is also great. Like I said before, showing team members and showing um, what work that you actually did. It's actually very, very nice. And um, this nice little page breaks are also nice. It gives me a bit of breathing time between skimming through different things. These are really great to showcase how you uh, do, um, how you did, how you have done a really good research. And I think it's nice to actually uh, showcase if you are actually doing a project with someone else. It'd be nice to actually showcase which chunk of work is being split across, okay. and uh, that could be a really nice thing to show because, like, in a in the same team, you might be working on uh doing majority of research or doing majority of um uh, motion design so you can actually say uh, what this person helped with or what this person has helped with so uh, i think you might have helped with research so i can portray that um, again this is a very nice way to portray the um, i think the user research here
one thing I would say is that if you're having any other screenshots or anything, it'd be easy. It should be very easy for someone to like tap on it or see a bigger picture. Oh, okay, yeah, like a light box, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, anyway, right? Like basically, it's hard for um, someone to actually see through or read through any of these things, and especially yeah, fair screens, even even more harder. Uh, I would even say for high priority designs. Uh, but overall, I. I like the structure here, and I think the structure promises that as a good story here. Uh, I can see your process, um, and I, I can also see your research and how it changes the process. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's great. I think these videos are also nice. It's a nice way to showcase uh, your product in in a very uh, uh, in very few seconds. You can showcase what your flow is like. Yeah, this is great. And uh, it would be nice to actually have uh, a section at the bottom or anything that says what, what you learned through this project and what, how you would do it differently or what are things that you find as limitations or anything that you would, because you know, like at this stage, I feel like the project has ended, but there's no good ending there. I think that the yeah, end is right. also, also is even like storytelling, right? You want to tell a good story and make sure you have some section at the end that says like someone can reach out to you. And because there's no contact here, I can probably go on about and try to contact you, but that's not a way. If you have a good email address shown in the bottom, then yeah, I can okay. reach out to you. Um, or even better, if someone can actually already uh, coming in from um, somewhere else, then they can actually know that this, you have done a very good ending at the end as a footer. But yeah, um, Gloria, how do you guys want to have anything to add? I think this is a really, really strong case study. I really love the layout. It's very easy to follow. I love the problem statement that you have up front. It gives the user context, the overview of like the team, the duration of the product, your role. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it's laid out very, very nicely. I love like the fact that you've got like visual artifacts and just evidence of the research that you conducted. Um, even the sketches, that's really nice to have. Um, and the actual like final prototype and the, the visual kind of flows of the interaction is really helpful when it comes to communicating your work. Um, I would say one thing um, I noticed is that you mentioned you did a lot of iterations. It would be really good to see um, how you iterate on it. Like, did you conduct usability testing? Maybe include a section on those, the findings that came out of that and how that informed your decision making. Um, I think having that um, as well as the, the key takeaways at the bottom will, will really add weight to this case study. But yeah, overall, really, really great stuff. Nice yeah, thank you. I'll definitely add those, yeah. Uh, one thing that I would add was, um, was this a university project by any chance? Yeah, it was. I think. So, because I know, I know with uni projects, you don't, have, don't build it, so then you, don't, you can't really measure the impact in some, or, or whatnot. But, I think like a good section to maybe just always have is like uh, what's next or what I would have done if I had like more a, time. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I know that these are all time boxed. So um, yeah, like if you had more time, what would you have done differently and stuff? Um, that's also a question that comes up in interviews quite a lot. Um, yeah, maybe just something to think about. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you. And uh, obviously um, I can spend more time on it, but I would, is there anyone else there? Then I'll probably stop sharing. Uh, but yeah, overall, all the portfolios I saw today is great. Uh, is there anything more? I think we're going to do one more portfolio and then might go in for a short Q&A. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're going to, uh, I know Taylor joined the, is, is Taylor Lamb in the call at the moment? I've been told she is. Yeah, so I joined pretty late. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I've just dropped the link to her portfolio in the chat. Um, but yeah, so yeah, carrying with that one.
I think I think overall I think Taylor has done a way where she has uh, removed the about me page by making it as a page where when I land on the page, the work comes later. And first, what I'm going through is uh, overall about her. This is great uh, because I'm learning more about who this as a person is and um, some other things about her testimony is great, uh, especially uh, if someone is looking into um, someone is looking into hiring her. Having these coming from like bigger companies would really help to sell her better. I think that's uh, her intention. Uh, it would be nice to showcase some of these um, companies or um, like logos there. It would be nice to actually showcase to scan better. I think. Uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, what I would say is that this page should directly connect to this one somehow or uh, somewhere there should be some section here because if you're relying on me scrolling all the way to mm -hmm. the top and clicking on portfolio, that basically means that I'm spending a few minutes actually looking for it and uh, uh, showcase your work somehow in the web page so that it's easily and organically I'm going there after learning more about you. Um, yeah. Is there any specific project that you want us to go through or can I click on the first one? Um, I guess the experience design one I have, I'm not really skilled in running case studies at the moment. So I feel like yeah. um, it's not as detailed as some of the other portfolios I've seen. That, that's uh, like, but, it's, it's never a comparison today at least. Uh, and it's today what I've got people portraying is actually just your portfolio and uh, what you went through, what stories are you saying? So uh, I'm going to this one. I think uh, this is the experience one that you have done. Um, I think this is clear, clearly shows what role you have done. Uh, and it's the exposures of what is invitation. Okay. This is a very good section to make me focus on the problem. I think this is like um, without any distraction, I'm actually seeing the problem here. It's great. Um, And then the rest, it was just paragraphs, but um, yeah. didn't really have time to, I guess, structure it nicely. Yeah, that's fine. I think I think the the overall um, take here is that I think you have showing showcasing your result here, and uh, there are a lot of good things that that should be more in the um, could be more uh, in detail, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, target market and current setup project. I guess these are things that you can definitely um, uh, make it more visual, make it showcase the, what is the story there. And um, one thing I would say is that it's a very nitpicky thing, but uh, don't have text that longer than uh, 20 or 30 words in line. And I think it's like, it extends based on my screen size, which is in a, um, which is in a nice way for me to read through because you know, I just came through from left to right. Uh, yeah. have a centered column so it's easy to read through them and it also makes it very uh, easy to expect where the content will be coming from. I think this way, this particular layout you have, it's very nice. Uh, it actually makes the content very simple to read. Uh, having a longer content makes it harder uh, and uh, it would be nicer to see some um, uh, iterations or what you went through to make these, I guess. Um, it, mm. it, talks more about the output, but uh, I guess uh, if you can share some of your process, that'd be great. Well, thank you. And these are also nice. I think you can also highlight them as um, uh, the issues that you have. It's like a bottleneck or it's like probably uh, obstacles that you've been through, right? So yeah, these are really nice things. And I, I really like that there is a uh, navigation here uh, for different projects. But yeah, overall, um, this is a feedback. And okay, the one other thing that I would probably add is um, uh, the background color. Um, obviously, I have a very high saturation uh, display, so it's like uh, it, it kind of is too orange for me. But yeah, yeah. sensitive feedback. If you want people to read and especially like longer text, make it easy in a neutral background. Even if it's the same orange that you're liking it, maybe you can maybe tone it down or tone it higher so that. It is more darker, so it's easy to read. So make it easy for someone to skim through and also read through. 
while this shows your personality well, I feel like this could also be like a form or function argument where the color is uh, outselling the content here. Yeah. Yeah. Gloria, how do you guys have um, anything to add? Yeah, I, I love how it's very clear. It's very readable. Like you've got your large font sizes to kind of uh, illustrate the key headings. Um, so that makes it really digestible. Um, but yeah, like um, Sagant mentioned before, it'd be really great to see um, a little bit more into the design process, um, how you approach the problem. So I love how you've got the little snippets of like the user testing things that you did. So having those visual artifacts, again, really adds weight to your portfolio. Um, but yeah, um, having like the, the iterations of the product, um, how you got to the final solution would be really great to see as well. Um, I think on the point of color, I think it's it's very unique, but um, you know, if you think about people who are colorblind, for instance, what would they see? Um, thinking about accessibility um, is also important as well when designing a product or even a website like this. Yeah, All right. thank you, Gloria. Yeah, um, I'm just echoing what Sagan and Gloria said. I, I think visually it's, you can make a few tweaks here and there, and I think um, it's gonna be pretty close to what uh, a good portfolio should look like um, in terms of uh, the different case studies itself. Um, it felt like there was it was incomplete in a few areas, um, and I think just it is adding a bit of work there um, yeah. could go a long way. Uh, I'm keen to see how this one turns out um, after you uh, improve on it. All right. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing this portfolio. Um, there's like a lot of prospect here. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'll just take over from here. Um, so thank you so much everyone for the portfolio reviews. I'm sure all the students gained valuable feedback and thank you again to all the students who submitted their portfolios. You know, it's not an easy task to get something that you've personally created um, to, I guess, be open to people talking about and giving feedback. So props again to all the students um, taking that step to put themselves out there to get their review seen yeah. by students as well. Yeah. It's definitely not an easy task. So props on you guys. I know that from this, you guys will be doing so much better from this as well um, if you had improvements to make. And of course, it's always a learning opportunity. So thank you everyone to all the students who submitted. Um, so I guess now that we just have about 20 or 15 minutes left before we wrap up, um, we'll just uh, have maybe a short Q&A session so if a student have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat or you can turn on your microphone as well. That's okay too. Um, so yeah, any questions from you guys or comments as well? We're, we'll just wait a few moments and otherwise I will um, drop some questions that we've had from our registration form too. Um, I had a quick question. Yes, um, go for just, it. I was just wondering, so like your port our portfolio is a, concise and it's it's decently quick to read but there's still a lot of information on there what i want to know is when you're in a portfolio review within an interview like you said i think the second stage was a portfolio review how do you how do you get your project across rather than just taking them through the website what's like the most effective way of showing why you did it and also how you did it but not just like reading word for word from your website i when I did my interview, I had the PDF or whatever and I sent it through to them. But then when I actually presented, I, I just pulled out information from that into a uh, presentation. Um, I, think, I think if you were to go, like you mentioned, word for word through your portfolio, like whether it's a PDF or website, it gets a bit, it, it can get a bit dry. And it's at the point where like the interviewer would probably be like, I could just read this myself. Um, I think you should maybe focus a bit more on um, taking through, taking them through that story of how you got to A, B, and C, um, rather than just showing. Um, so yeah, in my opinion, um, do a presentation. The other thing is, um, uh, one way you can do uh, more is to actually share things that you haven't shared, like what how I said. Um, you can always make your portfolio concise, but when you share things, you can share new information that the recruiter might not be aware of, and that makes the makes gives more context to the project. 
maybe it's NDA or other reasons you might not share this in the website, but you can actually like, tell them maybe. And that's one way to actually share more of your project. Cool, thanks so guys. I have a question. Oh, thanks, Nadia, for asking questions. Uh, we have a question from the chat. What are some resources we can look at to learn how to write good case? Yeah. Would anyone like to have a go at this question? Um, I think there's lots of resources online. Um, actually, in my slide deck uh, at the very end, I've included some links to some resources that you could also look at um, to see how other people constructed their portfolio. Um, I think essentially, uh, when it comes to writing good case studies, like I mentioned in my presentation, it's really just having those key ingredients. And as you've seen with the other portfolios, you can see how well people craft their story by outlining like uh, the problem that they uh, addressed or tried to solve uh, and taking users through that journey um, of each phase of the design thinking process. So, you know, from user research to ideation to user testing to actually shipping that uh, feature or that product. Um, but yeah, I think Saganth just posted something in the chat. Maybe that's uh, another really good resource to look into. Um, but yeah, there's, I guess there's no like one size fits all. It's really just how you choose to tailor that um, uh, to the final viewer. Um, but yeah, I'll also show the, the presentation around as well if you do uh, want to have a look at those links. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be really helpful. Um, we'll send it to you guys as well after the event. Um, if you can't find that link afterwards as well, that'll be really nice and useful. Um, did we have other questions from anyone else? I have a question. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a bit more career focused though. Is that okay? Fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so all the speakers, you guys came from different backgrounds, like not, you guys went in design from the beginning and you all kind of changed your direction towards the tail end of your degrees or even out in the workforce. So I just want to ask like how you made the most of, I guess the limited time that you had, or it's a very urgent, scenario switching um and so how you kind of gained credibility and got up to speed as a ux designer if that makes sense yeah um maybe i can start and then i'll like, again and how to talk as well uh, but for me personally so i started out in a commerce degree um, figured out towards the end of it. I didn't enjoy it. And that was just because I had gained some experience working at a company to see what the reality of it was like. Um, but yeah, I guess like how, how I made the switch was really by applying, um, what I call the learning framework. So there's three parts to that. The first is exposure. And then the second part is experience. And finally, the last part is what you mentioned, which is credibility. So exposure is kind of just going out and, you know, reading up about the, the subject or the topic, um, getting exposure through reading articles, talking to other designers, um, watching YouTube tutorials, just understanding what, it, what does it mean to be a product designer? And then, um, and how I did that, yeah, essentially was just by doing all of those activities. Um, and then the next kind of step to that was getting experience. So uh, it's hard to get experience when you don't have experience. Um, so like I mentioned in the presentation, you know, there's some ways to overcome this. So one is, you know, initiating your own product or your own project. And that's something that I did as well, which is uh, starting uh, working on a startup idea that came out of a hackathon. Um, and through that, I was able to learn how to use tools like, uh, like Sketch, um, which was the industry tool at the time. Um, and learning how to work with engineers as well was really important skill to have. Um, and that was kind of how I, uh, I leveraged that experience when, I, when it came to transitioning into the UX field. Um, so how I did it was transfer, transferring internally within my last company, which is Rocked. Um, I started out there as a digital marketer. And then a year in, uh, there was an opportunity for a UX design role. And I 
essentially just asked if I could, you know, try that role out for a bit because I did have some experience using Sketch and that was what they needed. Um, and I was fortunate to have been given that opportunity, which is, which eventually turned into a full-time role. Um, but yeah, in terms of experience, there's you know, the self-initiation of projects. There's also going to hackathons. So hackathons is a really, really great way to work in a team and get experience um, building a product in limited um number of hours um, and, and actually pitching that to a panel. Um, the other one is, you know, doing UX exercises or redesigning products that you like to use or that you, you've seen elsewhere. Um, so for example, I think it was uh, one of the designers that I showcased in the presentation, she did a redesign of the Sephora app um, and no one had asked her to do it. She just did it because she was passionate about learning uh, product design and she wanted to apply some of the theory that she had learned um, from reading articles on on product design. So that's another way you can get experience. And the final pillar to the learning framework is credibility. And that's something that you will eventually develop over time once you get more experience. Um, so credibility means you know, how do you raise your profile as a designer? And that, that involves, you know, putting up a portfolio, for instance, sharing that uh, with other, uh, other people in the industry, um, networking, doing speaker events, um, even writing articles, publishing them online and kind of establishing your profile as a designer in the industry. Um, so I guess, you know, it, it starts with exposure um, and then, you know, you build on top of that um, to gain experience and then ultimately you move, move into the, the credibility circle. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how, how you should kind of see it uh, when you are changing careers. Thank you. Awesome. Um, we have another question in the chat as well. Thank you so much for asking the previous question. Um, so what are the common mistakes that applicants make during a product design interview? So Gand, I think you have the most experience with interviews between the three of us. I think um, there are three things in my mind. Okay, I'm going to say uh, first one is basically uh, underselling them. I think um, most often or not, don't ever undersell your work or like it's nothing or anything. Um, don't let your imposter syndrome come out and speak on behalf of you, I guess. Uh, try to actually be proud of your work that you're portraying and actually see through. Don't um, talk it down, uh, sell it bigger. That's, uh, that's probably one big thing. The second thing is actually not sharing what part of work is actually done by them, what part of work is shared by someone else, especially in a group or team projects. It's a very uh, visible thing because we kind of know what you might have done or what you might have explored. But if we have a wrong assumption, it clearly shows in the next set of round or next few rounds. So yeah, basically like, uh, to give, give us a clear picture about what you did in a team project. The last thing is actually um, um, show, uh, show a bit more about um, you know, what obstacles or what things that you went through in a real realistic way, I guess. Um, not all projects are ha happy path, right? Everyone, like including all of us in Canva, go through a lot of projects that go through a lot of things. And um, obviously show the obstacles and show the, the bad side of projects too. I think this portraits well. Um, when you make it very easy to understand, very, uh, very fast to do a project, it makes it feel like almost like you're a superhero. None of us are superheroes. So uh, I guess like keeping it real is really important. So these are three things I have in my top of mind. I would add that um, just stick to the STAR technique or the STAR framework which is like situation, task, action, and then result. Um, that's usually the thing that we're keeping in the back of our heads when we're going through the interviews as well. And if we see that like you're missing one of those, we'll ask you about it. But um, if you can just be proactive about it and walk us through that kind of sequence, um, it would just be a lot smoother. Yep, awesome. Thank you so much to all the speakers um, for answering that question. Um, so I'll just do one last round for any more questions. Um, otherwise, we'll do a wrap up and a thank you to Canva Rex. Um, anyone else have any other questions they want to ask now before we wrap up? My last question would be, um, because it's unique to all three of you, 
Um, I personally have come out of a marketing background and have run to design for salvation. So it's very relatable to know that, you know, Gloria, for you to come out of like an e like e marketing kind of position, it's I think it's such a unique um having previous, I guess, professions is such a unique experience to apply to everything you use do in the future right so uh just to the three of you i guess what is something that you've taken from your previous profession that you think has become your strong suit in this field i can go first um i am a computer science grad and uh, i am a system thinker so i can actually code uh, not great, but at least well. Uh, so this is something that I, I can actually know what is complex to design, what is easy to design. I know when something is um, that's possible in a MEP and what is not possible in a MEP. So this is a very powerful thing that I, I, I almost take it for granted that I know how I can break down a design into a set of tasks, a set of things and actually see in terms of systems. And I also know what bugs are coming from where or how it actually as a system works. Uh, yeah, technical knowledge is always a good thing. And it's not a hard to pick it up, even if you are exploring now as a skill. Um, all you need to do is like pick up a, a coding language that you like and start learning, I guess. That's pretty much it. So yeah, I also came from a computer science background. And I remember when I met the switch, I was like, did I just waste four years and like a shit ton of money on a degree that I'm never going to use again. But uh, it turns out that um, it's come in handy a couple of times during work. Um, I love working with engineers. Um, I think that's, a, I would say that's one of my strong suits, being able to just work more closely with engineers um, and build a stronger relationship with all of them. Um, yeah. Um, for me, so I, I, I don't come from a computer back, uh, science background, so I don't actually know how to code. Um, but I would say, you know, having worked uh, in a corporation, uh, doing auditing and then uh, marketing, um, those skills that you pick up and the experience that you get from it is still transferable um, in the sense that from an auditing perspective, it's kind of like, well, you know how to like organize things, you know how to look at things in detail, you don't like skim over things at a high level. Um, and just knowing, I, I guess, like communication, teamwork, those types of skills are still relevant as well in, in your day to day, no matter where you go, no matter which career you choose to pursue. Um, with marketing, I guess it's a little bit different. I was doing digital marketing. I think where it has really helped me is being able to empathize with some of the users that we talk to. Um, so uh, for Canva Pro, there are a lot of people who are marketers who use our product. Um, so putting myself in their shoes is a, little, is a lot easier because I've been through what they've been through. Um, and I can see and understand the struggles and the pains that they experience. And that really helps when it comes to developing empathy for your users. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately, no matter which path you choose to go, um, you know, don't feel like it's going to lock you in because you, you've got, you know, 60 plus years of your life to, to be working. So you want to do something that you're really passionate about. Um, and it's not about the title. It's about the skills and the experience that you pick up um, because who knows, product design might become something else in the future. Um, who knows? Yeah, those are really great answers. Honestly, thank you. Before I do let Nikki wrap up, I just wanted to also take the time to thank you three on Suede's behalf. This is actually, and also to thank DigiSoc. This is actually one of our first events together and hopefully um, one of many to come. But it is really nice to see industry partners take the time to give students industry insight. It's one of the most valuable, I think, opportunities to learn what is ahead of us. Um, and it's always really good to see, you know, uh, Gloria Sagan and um, how like to just give just your time and like to be able to give quite like clean cut reviews on people's portfolios because not a lot of people would, would do it out there. So it is always genuinely appreciated, I think, from all of us. And I've been getting loads of responses from the Suede Society members and they were really appreciative of how um, just honest <laughs> you guys were with their portfolios. Yeah, agree, 100%. I think definitely as well, people were mentioning just how... Um, I guess, concise and to the point the feedback was, which is really helpful because it doesn't help when 
you know, the feedback's kind of beating around the bush, a bit fluffy. I loved how you guys are straight to the point. I think that's what people really need to hear in order to really improve their portfolios. So once again, thank you as well from DigiSoc on behalf. And it was amazing having to have you guys on board. And again, would love to have a similar event with you guys another time with Suede as well. Um, but yeah, I think um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to wrap up as well since it's almost the end of the event. Um, so once again, thank you all for coming today and for students who submitted their portfolios. Um, very courageous and um, very um, good step as well for you guys to get your portfolios out there. And thank you Canva, portfolio, uh, Canva reps as well for joining us today. Um, just before you guys go, I, we wanted to have a group photo with everyone. Um, obviously, feel free to use this photo if you guys wanted to share on LinkedIn. This is the same for the refs as well, um, but this is also just a really nice memory to have um, because, you know, we're in lockdown, it's good to have these sorts of things. So if you guys can turn on your cameras, um, that would be great. Okay, so I'm just going to get my screenshot ready. All right, so, um, yep, so I'll just wait for a few more cameras to be turned on. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It's really nice to see you all. Okay, so um, just I'll just do a countdown. It's a bit weird online. So three, two, one. Okay, um, I'll just do it on the other side as well. Okay, one more photo. So three, two, one. Okay. Thanks Alex everyone so much. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a good evening. Thank you so much for organizing this event. It was really well organized. Oh no, no thank worries. you for Thank, you, so much. <laughs> thank you for running. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks guys. Yeah.